Hi everyone, welcome to Edie's Craft Room. I'm Hannah Catherine Brand. Today we have some exciting quilting updates, including two quilts I just got back from the Long Arm Quilter. I also have to share with you a new work in progress that I am so excited about. And I thought I'd give you a sneak peek at some quilt alongs I am going to be starting here any day now. So much to dig into, so little time. Let's get into the quilting. First thing you've already gotten a bit of a sneak peek of because it's here right behind me, but at your recommendation, I had my beach day quilt quilted. I had a credit with my long arm quilter from my tragic missing quilt situation. So I decided to put it to good use and get a quilt top that has been sitting in my cabinet waiting to be finished, completely done. And I am so glad I did. As I said before, this pattern is Beach Day by A Quilting Life or Sherry McConnell. It finishes at 74 and a half inches by 90 and a half inches. So it is a nice big quilt. I love it. And it features the fabric line Dwell by Camille Ross Kelly, also known as Thimble Blossoms. I actually did a full video last year on making the quilt top. This was my first quilt I've ever made that is on point. So I go into detail on all of the things I learned and going about making that in that video. So definitely check it out. It is linked above and also in the description box. And it's just so fun to see that whole process. But now that it's completely together, so excited to share with you what it looks like fully finished because I am loving it. I did a Baptist clam pantograph on this quilt and it turned out so nicely. I'm really happy with how the rounded stitching contrasts so well to the boxy blocks that you see in the pattern. Part of the reason I also wanted to make this quilt was because I loved the dwell fabric line so much and I liked that this pattern didn't chop up your fabric into really tiny pieces. You were able to use fairly big pieces of fabric. So I used jelly rolls as well as a charm pack. So nice and fun with the pre-cuts as well. And it came together so quickly. So other than doing everything on point, which was new for me, it was pretty simple to put together. I couldn't be happier with how this turned out. And it is time for me to enjoy this beautiful quilt. The next quilt I got back from my long arm quilter, I'm only going to give a sneak peek of because it is my next original quilt pattern that I'm going to release. It is the sample for that. And um, so I'll give you just a sneak peek there. There's a star and there's part of one of the blocks. And I'll also share the backing because it just makes me really happy. It's really bright and fun. So more to come on that, but I just had to share that with you because it's been an important update on some things that are going on behind the scenes here at Edie's Craft Room. In the video that I made where I got some guidance from you all on which of my finished quilt tops I should have quilt in next, Thank you again for your advice on my beach day quilt. I love it. You all were very split on which of my UFOs I should finish next. A lot of you said that I should finish them out before starting anything new. And I completely agree with that. And the left side of my brain says, yes, that's correct. But my heart was telling me I just had to get started with swoon. So I did spend some time over one of my weekends cutting into my gorgeous lighthearted fabric by Camille Ross Kelly or Thimble Blossoms, who also wrote the swoon pattern. And I got all of my pieces done. Gumbo helped me or helped is probably in air quotes is probably a more accurate depiction of what actually went on but we had a nice time together getting all of the pieces up and running and you know i feel like i'm able to really tackle things when i have all of my pieces cut everything's ready to go and so anytime i have a spare moment i can just do some piecing so i actually did complete one of these blocks and i love it these are nice and big blocks Let's see if you can see it. Yeah, look how good that looks. I tried to pick fabrics in these swoon blocks that had some nice contrast. So I loved um, this floral with the aqua on it. 
and then tried to pair the pops of this almost like orangey red. It reminds me of that OPI nail polish Cajun shrimp, I think. Um, that's kind of the color. It has just like this pinky orange to it. Orangey, pinky, red. I don't know where it falls on the color wheel, but anyway, it turned out great. I'm really happy with it. And I have actually my pieces in front of me here ready to go. I don't want to disturb them too much, but I'll show you my, whoops, my pile. Boom. There we go. All ready to go. So I am working on tackling that. Definitely planning on having that finished by the end of the year. It goes fairly quickly. Um, it's just kind of like some more simple piecing, which is good because I have a lot of complex things going on. So I just needed something to kind of put my mind in neutral and work on. I've just been in a little bit of a funk recently in a lot of different ways. And unfortunately, quilting has kind of been affected by that as well. So that said, this has just been nice. I just needed a little bit of a break because I'm feeling a little burned out right now. So um, I don't want quilting to be too affected by that. So that is my new work in progress. Don't hate me for those of you who told me not to do this. I know, I know, I know, I'm sorry. I said the same thing to myself, but I just had to get started. <laughs> and the fabric was just calling my name. Also, word to the wise, um, I'm glad I did because as many of you know, my craft room where I'm sitting right now, it is in a sunroom. And when I was unfolding my fat quarters that I had stored in my clear plastic bins, I did notice some fading. So I'm really glad I tackled this sooner rather than later. And I was able to cut around some of those marks. It was just something I, I guess I had thought about it, but I hadn't seen any of the effects of it. And I didn't think it had been sitting in the bin that long, but gosh, those summer rays really did affect the fabric. So if you're storing fabric for longer than just a couple weeks, it might be best to put it away, take it away from the sunlight and make sure, you know, it's stored in a really nice and safe area because it will fade. Now to give you some updates on the upcoming quilt alongs I am going to be taking part in. The first is the dragon fruit quilt from Fat Quarter Shop. I am so excited to be working on this one. It features fabrics from Tula Pink, who I admire so much as an artist. I've just never been able to figure out how to utilize her fabrics in a way that makes sense for the type of quilts that I like. And I think that they did a great job putting this together. It's traditional piecing, using paper piecing. So really excited to get into that because that's something I haven't had a ton of experience for. So I believe that actually is going to be shipped out as a maybe this week or next week as of the time you see this video. So more to come on that. I will definitely be documenting my progress there because I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And with those bright colors, it's going to be really visually interesting as well to watch. On the complete other end of the spectrum, I got my first kit for the haberdashery quilt along. So I am so excited to share this with you. You can see the fabric. I thought this just made the most beautiful quilt. This is a uh, haberdashery and it is available exclusively from Nancy Rink Designs and features Marcus Fabrics. Um, this is the applique quilt. So there is some applique in this and it comes with pre-fused and pre-cut floral stem and leaf patches. So you can see those in there. Look at how gorgeous that fabric is. I just thought it was just so beautiful. Um, traditional, just a little more muted. I think I said in my last video, I've been doing a lot of really brightly colored quilts, which is a lot of fun, but I just, I needed something to tone down a little bit. <laughs> I was getting overstimulated, so that is just beautiful. So really excited to be working with these. Um, this was obviously my first shipment for this block of the month, and it is uh, one of those sew-alongs where you're making more than one block per month. Uh, here is the pattern. How gorgeous. And this makes a 91 inch by 91 inch quilt. So it's going to be a nice and big one. And I have all of my instructions here really able to dive in. You can see the up close of this quilt. This is going to be just a beautiful, in my opinion, heirloom quilt. So my first block, block month one, is going to be um, 
You know what, it doesn't have a name, but that's okay. But it's gonna be, it's gonna be this block. And I think I have to make four of these. So I will show you all of the fabric that comes with this. Cause it's just, ooh, it's so rich and classic. The first fabric is this like cross stitch print. Super cool. I think actually this is what Fat Quarter Shop selected for the backing. I don't think I purchased the backing just because, I don't know, it, it, I love it, but it didn't speak. Sorry, living in urban areas. <laughs> All right, back to what I was saying. I'm fairly certain that this fabric is what Fat Quarter Shop selected for the backing of the quilt. As much as I love cross-stitching, this just didn't speak to me for a backing, so I'll select something else at a later point in time. Then we have this brown fabric. And this, this reminds me of a color I would see in like my great grandmother Edie's house. It's just a really muted, almost rust color, really beautiful and traditional. And then here is that just ornate flower print in this brown color. So completely different than what I've been doing. But like I said, I needed a little bit of different. So again, I'll be chronicling that as well. I'm super excited to dig into this. There's just been so much going on and I haven't really had a chance or really even just <laughs> motivation at this point because I have so much going on, but we will get there. I'm not trying to rush, just trying to enjoy the process. All that said, I hope this was motivating to you to finish up some of your projects and to be able to enjoy them and also start others because you love them or be strategic about when you get into things because like I've said before, this is our hobby. It should be enjoyable. And I'm really trying to prioritize my happiness when it comes to this because this is not a job. <laughs> this is the thing that I love to do. Thank you so much for watching. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. What are you working on right now? What has been challenging about it? What has been enjoyable about it? And would you recommend it to your fellow quilting friends? As always, it is an honor and a pleasure to spend some of your valuable time together. And I am just so grateful for this community that I have in you and the broader YouTube community. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a wonderful rest of your week and until next time, happy quilting. Bye-bye.